Imperfect Gentleman Show. I think that we have obtained a false happiness, a materialistic, and not only materialistic, it's actually non-materialistic in a way. It's this online digital happiness, this life that we pretend we live. And that's our false happiness that we have developed as our generation because before people would travel, and I, I'm a victim of this too, our parents would travel to the cascades and breathe in the fresh air and climb to the top of the mountain and feel fulfillment. And now we just want to post the coolest picture of it and not even enjoy the moment, you know? Wow. So I you, think they had, they did enjoy things a little more than we did. Can, I think you just got to. Can I just say something to that point though? Yes. Um, and it's something you probably like, you know, we've been friends for a very long time and I just heard what you had to say right now. And this is something you should probably write this down. I agree with you a hundred percent. You will never hear me wow. say that again, by That's the way. A first. That's a first. I will not. I don't think That's you'll ever, first. because listen, I actually heard the a only lyric. Other time, the only time, other time Gerard agreed with me where I was like, you know, Todd, maybe I should just jump off a bridge. Think you're like, yeah, you should. <laughs> I just, no, time. it was for the reasons. It, I think it would be cheaper if we just die. Like, how crazy is that? Is that your life is worth more when you're not alive? You know what I'm saying? It's just because it's just so much. But no, I, and I don't advocate suicide for uh, for most people. Most people. I don't want to say all people because there are cases. And I actually just saw a case um, where like assistant doctor suicide stuff where people are terminally ill. I, I don't ever want to judge those people at all because it, it just seems so black and white when you're not going through something. But when, when you are, I can't even imagine. Cause like I'll stub my toe and be like, Oh, I wish my life was over. Like, so I can't imagine that. But, um, to the point of you saying that we find happiness and materialism, that's something that's so real. Hobson actually pointed that out in a lyric recently. And I'm not a big Hobson fan, but he was just like, we think having fun is going to clubs and popping bottles and watching girls shake their asses. And that's not real fun. I, and I'm paraphrasing what he said, but he, he says something like that. And I was like, wow, that's real. Like who taught us that this was having a good time? Yeah, that's solid. That's solid. I mean, we're, we're just, we're, we're basically so consumed by perception of others rather than perception of, of ourselves. We care more about what other people think. We care more that other people think that we're happy than we actually care about being happy. It's so pathetic. No, it's true. It's so pathetic. It's true. I, but that's the thing. I don't, like, at this point, with everything going on in the world, I don't know who's right. Like, I really don't know who's right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's, we don't, we, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because you go in one direction. There, you know, there's two sides to everything. And as we've seen politically, socially, it's just hard to win, man. It's hard to win right now. I feel like there was a time where it was easier to win. Like, didn't Rockefeller win? Didn't Carnegie win? Yeah, but you know win? what? That's actually interesting because in the book Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell is one of my favorite books of all time. That's one of the things he talks about is that there's a specific time, there's a zone, like a window, where if you, uh, if you did this at this time you would be successful for example when we look at all the ceos of of tech companies they are all about the same age bill gates steve jobs ceo of oracle all these people are about the same age even when you look at hip-hop so true diddy baby jay uh who else is a mogul jermaine dupree basically if you were born in the 1970s and were into hip-hop you and you were doing hip hop like that was your focus you would be successful then there's a fast forward it doesn't matter if you were born late boom there's a fast forward to if you were born and basically in the 90s and were a rapper you know it's just like it's like a specific it's a specific window of opportunity which is why you look at all the rappers and they're about the same age you look at all the moguls and they're about the same age you know uh even someone like Russell Simmons, all these guys, that there's a window of opportunity. So then you look at all the richest people and Carnegie, Rockefeller, 
all these guys, they were born in the 1800s in the United States, and it gave them a perfect opportunity to be famous and rich and wealthy in industry. And if they were born any other time in any other place in the world, it wouldn't have happened that way. So there is that window of opportunity. Yeah. We just have to find ours. We had found ours, uh, as you pointed out, when Tabby told us to move to Dubai and we decided not to, we would have been millionaires <laughs> we right now. not to move. We but, but what's really like, I don't want to say entertaining to me, but really like my laugh out loud moment is when people, I'm so glad you pointed out the importance of errors. Like I know so many people now who are coming up to me like, Hey, I have a brilliant idea. And I'm like, what? They're like, I'm going to build a website. <laughs> it's like, like now? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's... it's like, yo, you're, you're 20 years late. And if you do your research, that that was a bubble and it crashed. And then they're like, yo, I want to build an app. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Man, But like, that's the thing. If we had built an app, app, if we had built an app or, okay, you and I talk about this often, especially because Michelle Fawn is our, like, our girl, right? Is our... She's like our girl, but she's also like, are like guru in life. Yeah, I mean, she she, <laughs> she is. She's popping. I mean, we can't deny that she's popping. She made like, what, like 14 million off YouTube last year or whatever. But it's because all those yeah. people got into YouTube not to make money, but just to do YouTube. Like they didn't go out thinking, I'm going to make money on this. And then they were in it from the beginning. So when it manifested into something, it became something and they started doing well on it. And and now they're financially rewarded and it's like yeah it makes sense but at the time it didn't make sense that's the thing these vine stars they didn't know they were going to be famous they didn't know that they were going to be making money off vine what they did was they did something they loved and enjoyed and then it became something later but until when they were doing it they didn't even know what it was it's just like even with social media facebook Mark Zuckerberg and that crew, Eduardo, I watched the movie. They didn't know what it was. They just knew that it was something and they wanted to do it. And now, of course, you know, they're, you're looking at a company that's worth a hundred billion dollars or whatever, but that's what I'm saying. Like we can never, we can never guess what something's going to be until it is. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, it's hard to catch the wave. 